Okay, so we've sculpted the head, and now what we need to do is get some of this lovely paint on to the, to the head, the eyes, and the teeth. And then we can break the symmetry, and we can start working out a little bit about this guy's character by moving around his lips and his mouth and his eyes. So let's dive right in. So in the first part of this little mini-series, we sculpted this uh, character or stylized head. So in this part, we can have a look at trying to get it painted, or at least put a basic layer of paint on it, before we think about doing any kind of posing or breaking the symmetry at all, which means changing it from left to right. So you've got all the layers. Uh, if you don't know where they are, it's basically in here. Um, and if you look in, it's not in layers as such, it's in the objects. Uh, layers is a very different thing in Forger, which we'll try and touch on. But at the moment, we've got to pick what we want to paint. So we'll go for lower teeth. And we'll go up here to colour on the panel. And then we could just start painting by picking a colour uh, in here. Uh, and we won't go white, you never go white if you can help it. So we'll go slightly yellow and we'll just paint. So same as with sculpting, just increase the brush size, increase the intensity, and we can just paint. So see that's really rather dark. So we'll click on the upper teeth and we'll do them the same. And then we'll go a lot lighter, reduce the intensity. So what we're gonna do now is, as we draw across it, you'll see it's a lot lighter um, and, and, and would help if I was on the right one. It's a lot lighter um, uh, and, and it basically looks like there's a gradient going down from the top of the teeth to the bottom of the teeth. If you find it's too blocky, and there's a good example of it there, the upper teeth are quite blocky because they were low polygon. If we go back and we go to mesh and then we hit subdivide and we could do that twice actually just to make it really high resolution. And then we'll do the same on the lower teeth. And that means we've got much more, uh, a much higher resolution of polygons to play with, which means that the uh, this kind of painting, as you can see now, it's much, much better. That's because the painting is, is dependent on the, the resolution of the mesh. So the more polygons you've got, or the, the more points that stitch them together more accurately, the more accurate you, you will find um, that your uh, your paint is, you know, compared to to what your desire is, you know, you're getting closer to what you want to achieve. So back on objects, you can actually merge these two together. So there's no reason that I can think of why we wouldn't bother m merging them together. So we can take the upper teeth and the lower teeth. Um, you don't do anything in here, but at the bottom here, you've got two little arrows. Click that and then select lower teeth, upper teeth, and merge. And what that does then is I only have one. So when I paint now, I don't have to switch between, I can just do it like that. If you feel that it's still very dark and you're painting with light colors, it might be more to do with the material. So if you back out, go and have a look at materials, and this is the material we're using, and it might be that this is quite dark. So let's just slightly increase and slightly pink basically add more pink and red into the um, into the color like so and now it looks more like skin straight away now we probably want to just warm up the specular a little bit as well not nope, too much that so bring that back down and there we go that'll probably do us for now and we're going to use a couple of different materials because we'll make a new material when it comes to the eyes, but that would do for the skin. So let's go back and in fact, before we go back, let's make that material now. So plus, let's make a standard material. We want to call it eyes. Okay. We want to go a base color of, make it color and then just make it white. For now, we're gonna paint it anyway, but this is just the material. Let's just see what that looks like. I think that should look okay. And then drag it onto the eye. There we go. 
and then again drag that onto that eye and then we've got that material there so now we've got it on go back into it we can play with this specular a little bit now and that's how glossy it is you can see the eyes getting glossier and you can play with the metalness a little bit as well um, and that's going to give you different levels i'll do it too much so you can see see it's too metally there so be careful with the metalness um, just bring that down a little bit like that. That'll probably do for now. Um, you can play with the roughness as well. There's quite there's quite a few things you can tinker with, but for now, just be very very careful that you don't uh, lose the specular highlight because what we're after more than anything is that is that specular highlight, um, so that it looks like what what we want is the eyes to be, the eyes need to be shiny, so it'll at least have a little bit of a gloss to them. So we'll just put that back. get the right setting back you don't want an emit color because that will basically make it glow so let's just paint those eyes now so we'll quickly go up to the eyes and we've got remember we've got two separate eyes so what might actually be advantageous here is if we take this one and delete it and what we'll do is we'll work on just this one eye and then we'll um, basically just uh, merge mirror that across so that we've got the the painted eye going across as well so let's go a um, little bit reddish we don't again don't want to go white go quite high on the intensity let's just see what we get so that's quite dark a bit lighter the front now that clearly shows that it's not light enough in the material so i'm going to back out go to materials I'm just going to change the few settings here. Maybe a little bit more of the metalness back in. No, maybe too much. It's going to be a case of just finding a setting that works for what you want to do. Again, I'm going to extremes here, so it's just till we. Maybe I will put a tiny bit of a mitt in there just to give it a little bit of brightness. That'll do for now. So back out, go to paint. Now for the eyes, do a very simple one. What we'll do is we'll pick a black, first of all, and we'll paint the entire thing in the middle. See what the resolution is like. If it's grainy like this, that means there's not enough resolution again. So back to the mesh, we can subdivide it. And then paint it again and you'll find that that works much much better so let's have a look at the eye from a distance so don't need much more than that so we'll try it like that then we'll just pick the color that we want the eye to be so in this guy we're going for like a cornflower blue paint that in the middle the reason i do the black first is because i always like to outline the eye like that so it's always got a black rim and don't don't make it too symmetrical like so we've got the little uh, pupil dimp, dimple in the middle so it's not a, a, it's not going to be like a full cgi where we we have a, an outer glossy glossy shell or anything like that it's just going to be a representation of an eye and there you go you can see the eye looks quite good there now for you, you you don't have to do this, but what you can do is put a specular highlight in, depending on whether you're going very cartoony or not. So we'll put one in for now, and we might remove that later on. But it always adds a bit of life if the spec isn't the specular isn't high enough. That'll do for now. So we're going to go back to the object, and we're going to go I, and we want to duplicate again. And now we want to go back to our mirror and we want to mirror it across X. And there you go, there's a couple of eyes done and dusted. That'll do us for the for the eye section. So again, we're not too worried about the material because we'll probably use this in another program. So the um the specular highlight that we've we've talked about isn't isn't a huge problem. What you could do is try one of the different materials if you want it to be much more specular. So you could try either a lit sphere or, or, a, or a blend, something like this. So this one is a great example. So this is one that we could use. 
So, and you can see the specular highlight traveling. So if you choose that one, then you're not gonna need the painted specular highlight. I'll leave it on for now because it, show, it clearly shows you both options that you've got. So have a play with all of those and just, just, just see where you get to. What we probably would want to do is bring that same material onto the teeth as well. So that gives you a bit more of a shiny set of teeth. Be a bit careful because it can be a bit too plasticky. So let's go back to our um, head skin. So I'm just going to make the specular. Remember the specular is the shininess if you've never done this before. So to paint a head, you've got to, you, you could just say, well, it's a, it's a skin colour. But skin's a very difficult one to, 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 to say um, what the colour is because there's so many colours in it. If you think that skin without blood in it and without fat under it would be just generally dead cells, they're grey. But then the colour comes from what comes underneath. So if, if there's a lot of fat, it's yellowy. If there's a lot of bone sticking through, it can be quite blue. If there's a lot of um, veins in there or veins close to the surface, then red. So we can work that out as, as, as we do it. But it's going to look a bit silly for the first few minutes. So... Uh, let's just paint a, a couple of things as well. I want to show you something about the brushes. So if I say I'm going to paint with those colours, so there's a lot of bone near the surface on the head. So I pick a blue. Let me just make sure we're on the head because that would be the way to do it. And then paint that blue. So that's quite a light blue. Let's just get a light one. There you go. Now, what you can see there is just a standard paintbrush. And for this bit, that would actually be fine. <coughs> Excuse me. But what I would like to do is to start using um, some more of a texture in the actual brush. So we use these, which are called stamps. Now, we've got some free resources. Um, if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to get taken to somewhere where you can grab a pack of 20 of these. And these are just ones we've made in Procreate. Um, and for skin, I generally use something like this one. And you can see there, it gives you a little bit of a, a texture as, as you draw in. Um, uh, it becomes more applicable in a minute when, when we get down to the next level. So I'm going to go blue all over the top, which you might find is a bit strange. But think about, we're going we're gonna to paint a layer over the top of this. I'm going to generally go for a more redder colour through the middle. Again, I'm going crazily way over the top here um just just to be to be clear what we're doing i'm going to do a lot of red around the eyes it will look nothing like this i assure you once we're finished inside the mouth i always just go with a dark especially for stylized i just go with a a dark purpley sort of color uh, and don't worry about the overspill at this stage because all of this is going to change it's just a, this is this is if nothing else this is just your base coat uh, back to that red, maybe a bit more red here. I'm going to knock the intensity down a bit because we don't want it fully going through now. And then around the chin area, for a male, there's, got, there's going to be a lot of grey. But if you base it on yellow, first of all, that gives you that fatty area quite well. So, and you get, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So, we're probably going well over the top here and I'll probably probably confused you if you've never done this before because you might say why would you possibly paint red yellow and blue on a on a character for the inner ears um normally we'd have light coming through but this program doesn't doesn't really use that so we're going to emulate that a little bit a smaller brush and we're just going to paint orangey bright orange in the in the ears and that again we'll paint over that in a moment but that's given us a starting point okay so I'm quite happy with that for, for now, even though it might look a bit crazy. So let's start working with maybe some other brushes. So let's use one of these dotty brushes and we'll pick an overall pinky fleshy colour. So something like this. We're going to go really low on the intensity, bring that brush size down a bit. And I'm just literally going to work over the whole head. Let's just work literally all the way around. Keep that intensity really low. So as you can see, it's going over the top of what we've painted. So it's not covering anything up, but it's not, and it's not letting it all shine through too much and, and reveal through too much. So it's, this is almost like another layer. The back, I can go a little bit heavier. Keep going in different directions. Um, you want it to be, to be like a spray, really. and, and to, Because it's emulating skin, 
Um, you just want to, to make sure you've got different different strokes going different ways. You can see already that blue still shining through does give you a skin effect already. So work down onto the nose, around the eyes, and you're covering up all that work that you did, remember, but not completely. So it's just covering over and leaving the base red. Don't go into the mouth, by the way. Um, and go into the nostrils around here. I've gone too much onto the lip there, so we'll need to add some more back there. So underneath. And you see how we're leaving lots, lots showing through. building it up over that ear as well. You don't want any of that strong blue showing through or any of the strong yellow, because the idea is that just a hint of it comes shining through. Let's even change the brush again. So let's try something more like uh, this dotty one here. There's all sorts of different brushes in that pack if you want to go and get it. Um, this one will give you much more of a crisscross kind of pattern. You can download any brush uh, any alpha that you use for any other program as well. So don't think that you're just relying on these from this pack. This is only a very basic starter pack that I'm giving you. Um, we will be doing more and giving those away as, as things build up. And generally speaking, a lot of these are much more for the sculpting rather than for the painting. But they do the job admirably here for, for what we want. I'm just going to go underneath a little bit, bigger brush, and just cover it over like that. And you can see there that's taken out a lot of the straight away that's that's um really changed the look of it so it's gone from that silly clown like look to quite a, a quite almost not not far off really in, in in a way so i'm gonna do the lips now and i'll use this brush and keep it vertically so it looks like the striations on a lip maybe take some of the saturation out of that it vertical like so. Again, try not to be too saturated. And if at any point you need to see behind or look behind these teeth, just turn them off. If you remember, it's in. If you ever do need to do it, it's in object, and you just turn the eye off, whichever thing you don't want to see. So, but make sure you're back onto the one that you want. There we go, and then we'll go, I'll actually do a, a little bit of a grey. So we'll go back to the dotty one, and this one's going to be a little bit of the kind of five o'clock shadow scenario. Too dark there, so I'm just undoing. We'll go a lot lighter than that. And then we'll go a lot less. There we go. So you can see that. We're giving him kind of a proper old fashioned um, five o'clock shadow for a, for, a, for the big guy that he is. He obviously hasn't had a shave for a few days. And you can even go along here if you want to bring him a nice shadow comes along his cheek. So he looks a bit more like a, a thug of some kind. Don't go too dark with that. Okay, and now we'll go over the top of everything we'll get a nice bright pink hardly any transparency so you can hardly too, too pink actually look at that so a bit even lighter so there we go and what this is going to do is brighten it right up keep swapping those brushes should you need to don't fully swamp anything so don't get to the point where you completely obliterate all the work that you've done. Because obviously there's no point in doing it if you do that. Um, but that colour still shining through is what we're after. And we might put some reds and, you know, just, we might even have gone and put greens in. You can put, there's not really a colour you can't put into skin. Um, you've just got to follow the rules a little bit. So warmer and redder around the cheeks. 
bluer around the top and more yellowy around the bottom is the is the is the way to go. Um, there you go. We've got quite a good spread now. We'll get rid of that redness from under the ears, under the, the nose. Sorry. What I might do is just go a little bit darker under here, just so that we've got a bit of a, a fake shadow. I don't normally uh, suggest this, but if you want to add in uh, eyebrows, so pick a dark brown colour and go back to one of the hair type brushes, maximum or high up on the intensity, um, smaller kind of brush, and then you can easily add, add like a fake eyebrow kind of effect. And likewise, if you felt you needed to, you can add goatees and whatever it is. He looks a bit too surprised there. Um, so I think probably what I'll do is I'll just remove that. And then we can, uh, I've just removed the goatee. Well, sharpen that up a little bit. There we go. So he's got, he's kind of like, his surprise has, has, has gone up quite uh, significantly. So he's more surprised than he was a few minutes ago. So that's probably a good 101. That's probably enough minutes of, of, of showing you how to do that. So you can have a practice of that now. So something you might want to do now is, first of all, save it. So I'll just go down, back out here and just save the 3D model. We know what we're going to call it. Um, this is an export. Sorry, we don't want to do that. We want to save, which is the next icon. We'll do a save incremental. We've already saved this head on the previous recording. So that's just going to do one iteration up. So once he's saved, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of um, moving him around without symmetry on. This is called breaking the symmetry. So make sure you're on the head again. And we'll turn that X off and go back to move. And then what we'll do is we'll a bigger brush and we'll just bring everything slightly. Oops, let's come back to painting that. Turn off the brush, make sure it's on move. There we go. Keeps doing the painting, so let's just turn that off. hitting the wrong button that's why turn that around to the side slightly and then we'll go one eyebrow up even more so it's a bit of surprise on this corner and we're going to bring this one down so he's got a little bit of a it's different on each side of his, his head so we'll bring this lower eyelid up and this one down and then if you look from the top we'll bring this out as if this eyebrow is coming down so he's a bit quizzical on this side and this one can stay with that super raised up look. And what you'll see straight away is when you've broken the symmetry, the character can come to life. So it, it nothing in life is symmetrical. Every, everything's close to being symmetrical. If if it's a you know like a, a human or a, or a, you know a mammal, or, you know most animals are symmetrical to some degree. But we're not fully symmetrical and it really, really, the human eye can really detect that. So the minute you break symmetry, you're going to see things like this where it, it just looks better. So if we're going to raise this eyebrow up on this side, then we want this side of the mouth raised as well. And if we're raising this, there's no reason with a stylized character, you can't move the teeth. You wouldn't do that really on a, obviously on a skull those teeth aren't going to move, but on a cartoony character, you can. You can get away with that a little bit. So we'll move these around on this side. We'll go back to the head, and we'll close the mouth down a bit on this side. We'll pull that mouth back a bit more. So we're really exaggerating it now on this one side. What you could do is also move the eyes. So remember what we did transform. 
and we can use rotate so just be careful about where you move it to I just moved it completely off screen which I didn't want to do do it a bit slower I don't want him to be cross-eyed or anything but I do want him to have a little bit of a maybe he's looking up and to the right. So we'll do this eye. We'll rotate this one out a little bit as well. Moved it out of place obviously, so. I just switched the wrong button there. Turn that symmetry off and go back. Keep moving him off screen. Don't think he wants to play with me. I'll move that eye just a little bit back. Now we haven't done eye, um, eyelids as such on this character, but you don't really need it. It's it's kind of you, you, this is going to be your first character. Then this is quite a good start um, and puts you in a good place to you know to just to try some of these features and some of these tools. So that will do for now, and um, that's a really good start to or a good set of lessons to start building your first character. So. <coughs> excuse me so go ahead and try that give it a go if you think i'm doing a good job with showing you this kind of thing then subscribe to the channel and give us a like and um, don't forget to hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we're doing more of these and don't forget it's forger friday so if you want to search for forger friday you'll find us posting these every week um i hope you're enjoying forger and show me some of your designs and post in the comments below